What's going on everybody? Hope you're doing well. I wanted to make a few more videos about this year's Eurovision Song Contest entries, and among them we have a fairly popular one from Norway. Back in February, we saw Alessandra take to the Melody Grand Prix stage and achieve a landslide victory with her song Queen of Kings, an explosive dance pop anthem that very quickly became a fan favorite. In addition to being quite popular among Eurovision fans, the song has also achieved what so many musicians dream of in 2023, which is to go viral on TikTok. The expectations for this one are quite high, and that's even true of the producers of this year's contest, who have given Norway the responsibility of opening the show. But being such a favored entry, you also get your share of critics. And while I wouldn't say that people have the same reasons for not really being into the song, I would say that they kind of all fall under this one idea of of, is this song to Eurovision? Let me explain. So there's a fairly broad generalization that gets applied to female artists who are bringing dance pop in any given year. And as with any generalization, you lose a lot of nuance and you kind of oversimplify what the qualities of each individual song are. Now, if you had to list off certain features that are typically associated with these types of entries, a few of them would be a highly choreographed dance routine, a fair amount of sex appeal, and certain lyrical themes that are familiar, often ones about like, like female empowerment, love song, breakup song, anything that's kind of familiar territory for pop music. These songs are a bit of an expectation at Eurovision, and when they're pulled off effectively, they can be a huge moment for the artist that's performing them. Now, how much does Queen of Kings fit this model of a girl bop? Well, to some people quite a lot, and that could be the reason why they like it or don't, depending on their taste. For me, I sort of agree. But I also feel like there's a lot more in the song that doesn't get enough credit for being unique. The first reason for me is the sound of the song. We haven't quite seen a Eurovision entry with this sound that has this hard driving beat and melodies that are built entirely around triplets. Admittedly, it's not the newest sound when we're talking about music in general because it's been a bit of a staple for EDM festivals for the last 10 years. But when it comes to Eurovision, we usually don't see the girl bops have this kind of approach because usually they're more interested in, in duplicating the sounds from hip hop, reggaeton, synth pop, electro pop, disco, that kind of thing. The second thing is how they handle the empowerment theme, which yes is pretty typical of these kinds of girl bops, but at the same time it's not being done in the most obvious way. Alessandra's singing in a more like powerful operatic way, whereas typically you'd expect like a soft sultry vocal, lots of sex appeal visually and in the lyrics, and you don't really need that here. And finally, Alessandra was actually involved in writing the song, and she's made a clear connection between this message of empowerment and her lived experience as a bisexual woman and the adversity that she's faced. So from my point of view, I think this song is actually offering a lot more than the typical songs that are given this kind of blanket description. Now another aspect of this entry that I would say also is quite characteristic of Eurovision is the staging. It definitely looks like a Eurovision performance, especially the fact that people associate Norway with certain features like Norse mythology, Vikings, seafaring, that whole thing. For Alessandra to be dressed as a queen and singing she will be the ruler of the North and Southern Seas, it's playing up to that idea in quite a literal way. And this whole idea is often thought of something that works for Eurovision, that you're allowed to go a little bit over the top, and I suppose that's fair, but I think that there's still one cardinal rule of storytelling that's being broken show, don't tell. Many of you would probably remember the Norwegian entry from two years ago by Tix. If you watch the Eurovision performance, you see a guy who is more or less stuck in the middle of the stage singing, I'm a fallen angel, dressed as an angel. If you watch the music video, you see the story of a boy who was bullied for having Tourette syndrome and lost his self-worth. Now, as mediums, it's an apples and oranges comparison. It's a lot easier to tell that story in a music video because you're allowed for a lot more flexibility than you are in a live TV performance. But the point is, the emotional impact of your song is felt so much more when you don't point directly at your metaphor. In this case, it makes sense that Alessandra is dressed the way that she's dressed, looking like a queen complete with a tiara. But that's kind of the extent of it. If she's supposed to be this powerful figure, why not show us that? Why not use the dancers, let's say, as a means of conveying that? Because they could be 
her minions or her servants, or they could even be the people who try and take her power away from her. Those ideas are also quite literal, and they wouldn't have to be exactly like that, but at least the dancers would be used in a more meaningful way rather than simply filling out the background in a very straightforward arrangement. And when you do something like that, you don't really need the queen getup because people will get the idea. I do want to stress, however, that I think as an overall package, it works quite well. I just see it as a bit of a missed opportunity that could have perhaps gone against this idea of, oh yeah, it's just another kind of kishy, over-the-top Eurovision song. As far as how well this could do for Norway, considering that it has some momentum behind it, and that it's at least like, you know, giving the people what they want, I think that top 10 or top 5 is possible. I am expecting some contenders to emerge from the internally selected songs, and if that happens, this one can certainly slide down in our estimation, but we wouldn't be able to know that until rehearsals, so we'll have to wait and see. Let me know what you think of Norway's entry this year. Is this one of your favorites? Do you agree with these criticisms of it being too Eurovision or just another girly bop? Let me know in the comments. And if you like this video, I hope that you subscribe to the channel so that we can talk about some other entries that we haven't covered yet. Thank you so much for watching. I'm really grateful for all of you who give me your time, and I hope to see you on the next one. Take care.